A quick shout out before today's video to let you know that the fourth episode of the second season of the Sojourn audio drama is out now on Patreon, with the fifth and sixth episodes coming very soon. If you're interested, you can get these new episodes, and every other episode of the show, at the cheapest tier. If Patreon isn't for you, then these new episodes will also be available on other platforms come June 28th, including directly from their website. Check out the links below in the description and pinned comment for more. Now on with the main video and have you ever been watching a sci-fi film or show? There's a big space battle going on and the losing spaceship starts sinking. Surely that shouldn't happen since it's in space so it should float? Well, yes and no. There's many reasons why defeated spacecraft might sink, from easy to read visuals, audience expectations and even realistic physics. Yep, even in Star Wars. But if those don't apply, then what else can you do? All that is what we're going to cover today. So, why do spaceships sometimes sink? There is actually a realistic reason why, which I'll go over later, but arguably the most important reason is that it's a great way to show when a ship has been defeated, or at least heavily damaged. This may also take it visually out of a battle, given the general tendency for sci-fi ship battles to be fairly two-dimensional. It's like how you know that a generic bad guy has been sufficiently beaten up when they get knocked out and are on the floor. I think the reason this is done is the huge amount of inspiration that sci-fi battles take from naval battles, which are obviously also two-dimensional. Just ignore submarines, those don't count. It follows that if the battle is inspired by naval ones, then defeated ships should sink. The second most common thing is that defeated ships are just utterly obliterated, either from super powerful weapons or there's some internal detonation of their power cores or whatever. And this does make sense, antimatter explosions inside a ship are a somewhat suboptimal situation to be in, existentially speaking. And this achieves the same thing as sinking, in that the ship is taken away, it's removed from the battle. And both of these tie into audience expectations. Because these things have happened so many times before, people expect a defeated ship to be utterly evaporated or to sink away. If this doesn't happen, there's a chance people might not understand what's happened, and so to make a scene be easily understandable right then and there with no thought required, this is what happens. But what if you want something a bit more substantial than it feels right? Well, there is a real physics reason why spaceships could sink, which sort of goes back right to the intro where I said, since it's in space, so it should float. Stuff doesn't just float up there forever just because it's in space. They don't just become weightless upon leaving the atmosphere. There's two related things going on here, and I promise they will both come back around to spaceships sinking. The first thing is orbits, where stuff falls so fast sideways that they miss the ground and keep keep on going around the whole planet. The second is relative motion, where astronauts inside that sideways falling spaceship are also falling sideways, but since they aren't moving relative to their craft, they appear to float within it. The same is true of spaceships matching orbits to dock or to fight. That second one of relative motion is where I think the idea that stuff in space should just float weightlessly comes from. That does happen, but only under specific circumstances and ones that can be matched in atmosphere. The sinking part comes from sci-fi ships often not being in orbits. Instead, they just hover above a planet, something we've seen them be able to do fairly often. In the space battle case, they just happen to be doing it very high up, so when they get shot enough to be disabled, they can no longer maintain their hover, so they fall downward. They appear to sink. This is also one of the potential justifications for why those bombs fall down in the opening of The Last Jedi. The ships aren't in orbit, they're hovering, so the bombs drop down. And for another Star Wars example, this could be why the Executor fell down onto the second Death Star. Not only does this shot look incredible and is a visual metaphor for the progress of the battle, but it makes sense that it fell down out of the battle towards the closest massive bodies. I think there's also another contributing factor here, but I'll get into that one in a moment. As we can see, spacecraft have many reasons why they may appear to sink, but what about sinking alternatives? Sinking substitutes? <laughs> The first of these plays with the way that so many ships in sci-fi are festooned in pretty little lights. Mostly this is windows, but it can also be glowing warp engines and stuff like that. These things give life to spacecraft, so seeing a ship lose them is a great way to show that they've been taken out of action, though this may need to be combined with one or more of the other alternatives to really sell it. To me, the most obvious way to show that this power outage is due to damage is to have debris floating near the ship. 
There is a question over whether it would really stay near the ship, since if it got ripped off of it, then it's going to have a different relative velocity and move away. But let's just ignore that and have it lazily float there. Related to this is a space version of an oil slick or other fluid leak. Like with the debris, this does come with caveats though, since one, the liquids may boil to gas, and two, gas would just instantly spread out everywhere because it's in a vacuum. But apply a little artistic license here and we get nice dramatic clouds and slicks lingering around a disabled vessel, like a visual metaphor for bleeding out. The really big alternative option, instead of sinking, is drifting, which again crosses over with naval inspirations. Not every ship that's defeated is going to sink, but it may be knocked out of action and so wind and waves carry it away from a battle. Up in space, this works somewhat similarly, but instead of wind and waves, it's just momentum from movement, since there's no friction to bring anything to a halt. This drifting could manifest as sinking, as I said earlier in the realistic physics section, but it could just be that a ship was knocked out while it was manoeuvring, or while it was at a different relative velocity to the battle. If so, it might slide out of that battle, or through it, or even in unpleasant directions for ships around it. Related to this is the idea of a loss of control over engines like perhaps one gets stuck on or something. Again, this applies to naval combat too, but there it may be more that a rudder gets jammed into place, putting the ship into an uncontrollable turn. For spaceships, this stuck engine can either be the main engine or even just one from a group. If it's the latter, then off-center thrust would then induce a turn, just like that stuck rudder. And if this happens in conjunction with other visible battle damage like debris or a partial power outage, it could definitely give the same sort of vibes as a sinking ship. In fact, this is the other way the Executor could have lost control and sank into the Death Star after its bridge got knocked out. There's other ways to apply this to realistic spacecraft since they also use thrusters to change their orientation. If any of these get stuck on, or even stuck off like those on the Starliner capsule last year, there's even more potential for uncontrolled movement. Either something gets stuck on, forcing continuous movement, or one stuck off can't stop a movement. Leaks of fluid or gas would also have the same effect. It might not be as strong as from an engine that's optimised for creating propulsion, but it's still mass being thrown out, so it would still affect the ship. Of course, the best option is to combine everything we've talked about today, if it's possible, which it may not be. There are many constraints on production after all, like budgets and time, or it just plain not being in the creator's vision, which is totally valid. So, to wrap up the points from the intro, spaceships may sink because it's an easy to understand visual tied to naval inspirations, but it's also entirely possible for it to happen within realistic physics, as spaceships fall out of a battle. And there's a whole host of other ways to achieve a similar goal, which may also be combined for a stronger effect. And last of all, a question. Which method of showing spaceship destruction does your favourite sci-fi use? You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon, where you can get our frigate and space fighter design reference books. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters, and thank you for watching.